seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. The Savachi syndrome, I'm telling you, I'm... Well, holy shit, that was crazy. Wait for it. Thick and slick. <laughs> All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show Fantasy Podcast Edition here. I believe we are on episode nine, eight, nine, something like that. Anyway, uh, back here on a Thursday evening, getting ready to put in our picks here for PulpamexFantasy.com. On the line with me today, the one, the only, usual co-host, Cole Ugetti. Cole, what's up? That is right. I'm the one and only. Just, uh, no, just fin- finished up with some dinner at the uh, local Mexican spot. Oh, nice. Where? Um, where are you at? Uh, La Cocina Mexicana. I don't know where that is. I right. was I was there. I just walked in the door and then uh, going to knock out this pod and then uh, get going on some Yellowstone. It's a new little series we've been watching. Oh, yeah? Is it good? Not bad. It uh, so it got the Peacock app for Supercross, and then this ended up being <laughs> on it, and all my, all my boys started watching it, and said, "Hey, this is pretty good." So now me and the girl are watching it. Yeah, I mean, it looks so, okay. So I haven't, haven't it's seen it's it. worth that uh, that four ninety nine a month. Well, I mean, we may have to try it then because we uh we've been into the uh, Wand Division on Disney Plus here recently, mm-hmm. um, but that ends this week. The last episode comes out, so yeah, so definitely gonna want to try to find something else to watch here. But in the meantime here, we're here to talk fantasy. So let's start here. Let's uh let's thank the uh thank the people that support us that kind of help put this on. So first off, as per normal, thanks to TLR Coatings, Michigan's number one custom powder coating uh shop there. Powder coating, sear coating, vapor blasting. We do it all here. So make sure you look us up, tlrcoatings.com. Check us out on all the major social media networks. We are on all those. You can see the, the cool projects we do. We do shipping on everything. So make sure to check that out. Um, also want to thank Premier Custom Trailers being on board with us this year. Do you uh, do you need a trailer, commercial or residential? Premier Custom Trailers has what you need. They work with the best manufacturers in the industry and specialize in all your trailer needs. Sales, service, parts, or rentals, they do it all. PremierCustomTrailers.com, located five minutes south of Kalamazoo on US-131 in Schoolcraft, Michigan. They put the custom in customer service. Also want to thank uh, a couple other sponsors for specifically this show, but they're on board really with all of our shows. Uh, First off, JT Cycles over in Battle Creek. They are your uh, Gas Gas, Husky, Suzuki, Steel Chainsaw specialist there so make sure to look gravely mowers okay great whatever that is some sort of yeah gravely lawnmower Uh, zero turn all right and uh and then also want to thank uh the dirt bike depot uh they're on board with us helping us out with some prizes here um the dirt hyphen bike depot.com make sure to check them out or look them up on uh instagram they have tons of slightly used and brand new gear boots helmets everything on there so at discounted prices make sure to look them up now what we are doing here as i said before we play fantasy supercross on pulpamexfantasy.com we have a league it's called moto aftermath show league um if you would like to join our league we are giving away year-end prizes so if you've been playing just haven't joined the league feel free to join after you join the league make sure to go follow us on instagram and then make sure to dm us your team name so that that way we got it we do weekly prizes occasionally here and there we haven't done one in a couple weeks we're gonna do some coming up we have a couple more three rounds here so uh during dallas there will definitely be um some prizes and during the atlanta rounds there definitely be some prizes uh daytona this week i don't think we're gonna do anything um, but again, year end prizes also. So make sure to, uh, make sure to check those out. And, uh, again, make sure to, uh, to join our league and DM us your information so that, uh, so we have it. So if you do win, we can, uh, we can get you some prizes. So 
Coming back in, Orlando 2, uh, my shittiest round of the year here. It was fucking terrible. I have now fallen to fourth place in the league. I am a little upset with myself. The night did not go well. Scored a solid 158 points. So let's jump into this here. First off, in the 250 class, which is really what did me in for Orlando 2, I had Garrett Marchbanks as my all-star. Scored me 26 points. That was solid. Joey Crown, Michigan native, had high hopes. Scored me 34 points. Not bad. And then I would never. What? I would never. You were never on the Joey Crown ride, huh? I am never on that train. Really? I mean, he had some good finishes last year, dude. He scored some good points. For two rounds, and then he hit the deck. Look, 34 points is solid because my next two were terrible. Okay, let's start with Carson Brown, who was on the ground trying to put his elbow back in place in the heat race. First lap of the heat race. Yeah, I was pretty fired up seeing him just not moving. That was a great start to my night. And then we had... Carson Mumford, not making it through in the LCQ. Been watching his vlogs all year, thinking, man, this guy looked good. And then just nothing. So two big goose eggs there. So I had a total of 60 points in the 250 class. Then in the 450 class, a little bit better. Uh, Had Jason Anderson paid off for me, 34 points. Had Marvin Muskin paid off with 26. Malcolm Stewart with 26. And then I had Chiz is going to Chiz, and Chiz chizzed. He did make it into the main, but we missed double points just by a smidge. Uh, so 12 points on the night for him. Like I said, giving me a total of 158, by far my worst score of the year. Um, very, very sad. Was not even close. Was 100 points south of where I where it really needed to be. So, um, But whatever, we will rebound. If that's my one race for the year and the rest of the year is all above 200, I will feel okay with myself. So, Cole, how did you do at Orlando 2? I did great. Finally got the train somewhat back on the tracks. I mean, I've got, I I say this every week, I have two rounds that were below 200. The rest have been from 230 to 250. Um, This week, I was a little shy of that. I had 226, but I'll take that um, 1,200 overall. Um, made up some points on a few people, but not as much of as what I could have. Um, thanks to Carson Brown. So I had Carson Brown at zero. Um, really wish I would have left my pick of uh, who did I have? I had somebody that made a lot of got a lot of points in and swapped him out for Brown. So that was cool. Um, and then I did Hunter Lawrence, 34, negative one. I said I figured there was no way he was finishing outside of the top ten. Um, so what Hunter Lawrence used him up because I knew he would become an all-star this week. Um, so used those points while they were there. Um, Justin Cooper, 26 points. We all know how his night went. Um, and then my other guy, he qualified well, and I knew he was a wily veteran, wasn't going to explode. Chris Blokes, 34 points. Um, I don't, I think a lot of people really overlook Chris below. So, um, solid 250 lineup, um, despite Carson Brown, but Hey, whatever. Um, 450 class was almost perfect for me. Um, despite Dylan Ferrandez. So I took him, um, after his qualifying, it was dumb not to, I think. Um, and looking at his lap times, he would have podium, but that's how it goes. Sometimes he made, a pass in the last corner on the last lap to get a double point. So thank you, Dylan. 26 points. I'll take it. Um, my second guy, I took Justin Bogle. Um, I had seen some of the Team Pride blogs and some of the other videos of him out riding with the Lawrence brothers, Savachi, um, Anderson. Good group of guys, good fun group of guys, and I think that's a good place for his personality and ultimately can can put him in a good spot on the track and it looks like it translated into a top 10 for him so awesome for bogle i'm a big bogle guy 46 points not a lot of guys took him um he had a really low pick trend so um got him 46 um took marv at 26 points and then i took brock tickle my pickle he got 34 um so almost a damn near perfect 450 team i couldn't take anderson because i had him the week before which sucks but whatever 
Um, so yeah, that was my team overall. I'm pretty satisfied with the night. I, it started off rough. I was a very pissed off individual because Carson <laughs> was down in the Brown and I, it just, yeah, I wasn't very happy. So I guess, uh, as much of a crap shoot as the 250 class was, I came out pretty good. Um, and having seven dudes in the main and still almost cracking the top 1000, I'll take it. So, um, yeah. Let's uh let's get on to Daytona. I'm excited. I think there's a a lot of a lot of points to be made up. Um, I think there's a lot of interesting picks for Daytona. I mean, the, a be- couple the best part is so. right now we have a baseline for this 250 class. So, um, okay, so let's get started here with 250s. Do you have a team in? Did you put one in already? Yeah, I got a team right here. I got Team Scream. Okay. Well, and I actually, I am it. getting I am getting rid of one right now. Oh boy. And I'm getting rid of I'm getting rid of two actually. Oh boy, here we go. So I'm Axon, Dylan Schwartz, and Mitchell Harrison. Really? Yep. Okay. Why are you? Let me ask you. Why are you axing Mitchell Harrison? Um, I don't know, man. I guess I got to see him on practice. He was kind of overlooked in the pulp show too. Nobody said anything about him. I think there's more value elsewhere. I mean, a three. I mean, is he a top ten guy? Yep. I think so. Um, I mean, you've but got... I think there's there's opportunity for 52s deeper in the field. You could go Martin Costello. Um, you could go uh, Nick Gaines at an eight. Um, Jarrett Fry at a six. I think those are more points than you know. Let's say Mitchell finishes tenth and gets you know what twenty eight points, thirty points, where a guy like this could be in the high thirties to high forties. So. Um, if you want to play it safe, I would definitely go with Mitchell. I mean, he, he pulled out a 15th even with that crazy crash. So, um, yeah, I mean, this. But is... we have Alex Martin back, so let's shuffle him back one more spot. Um, and you got a guy like Alex Martin at a zero. So I am all in on Alex Martin um, currently, just because I know he ain't going to quit. He's going to be in the top ten. Um, the only other thing that I will consider is that. He has a somewhat bad round, and you can take him next week because he's going to be a very hot pick this week. Um, so right now, I do have Alex Martin on my team. And then my next guy that I am going to is, uh, I think I am sold on Styles Robertson at a six. Bold move. Really bold move. Maybe Styles or maybe Jarrett Fry. Um being Daytona, they're more of the outdoor guys. They they rode really well in the outdoor season. Um, another guy you can look at is Carson Mumford, but again, who knows? He, we thought he was going to be a shoe in last week. So um, I'm going to look at those few guys, but as of right now, I'm going to lock my team in as. Uh, where did you go? You know where Jarrett Fry was when he crashed last week? Wasn't he around 10? I have no idea. Where was Mitchell when he crashed? I, that's another good question. <laughs> now I'm going to have to go back and watch. I mean, if you really want to dive in and do some research, you could. But um, that's where I am sitting right now. I've got Jordan Bailey at a 9. I think that is all day. Give me Jordan Bailey. Um, Cameron McAdoo at a 2. Alex Martin at a 0. I think those three are solid. My fourth pick is going to be the one that, that really worries me. Um, that's Jarrett Fry with the six. And chances are he's going to get swapped out, maybe for a Mitchell Harrison, maybe for a Martin Costello, um, maybe a Dylan Schwartz on an outdoor-style track, but I think he's still kind of a pinball. So um, who else do you like on there? Do you like a Ty Masterpool? Uh, no, my team is pretty – Pretty basic, pretty close to that. So all-star, I have Justin Cooper at a one. I mean, this is pretty much, as far as I'm concerned, his title to lose at this point. So I think I think we're okay. I think at that one, you're good. I mean, chances of him finishing off the box, I think, are very, very low unless he hits the ground. Um, I have Mitchell Harrison at a three. We'll have to see how his day looks. I mean, the X factor to all this is there's a high probability it's going to be muddy. So that's a that's an X factor to all of this here. Um, they're calling for rain. It looks like rain. It's probably going to rain. So 
these uh, these picks are majorly subject to change. Um, but Mitchell's one of those guys. He won't quit. He had kind of a bonehead move here last week. I think he's in the top 10. And as you said, you and I are kind of going for different spectrums here. You are, uh, you've had quite a few bad rounds. So you're trying to like send it and get those 52s where I'm trying to get back into my solid 230 to 260 range here. Um, also on my team, Alex Martin, like you said, at a zero, uh, just watched his vlog today, came back off his concussion. He seems to be good to go. So, um, we will we will see how that goes, but he's another guy doesn't quit outdoor style, whatever. Uh, and then another the the really I guess wild card of the group I have is I have uh, he's number sixty nine on the track, but number one in your hearts, Robbie Wageman at an oh, eight. He is at an eight. Now if it's if it's raining and it is gonna be a full blown mud attack here chances are high he's coming off my team strictly on the basis of i don't know what his parts and bike setup looks like um and in that case i'm gonna go to probably a lot more safer team guys we'll call them um but yeah if it's muddy i'm i'm putting jordan smith on my team yeah, we're we're definitely yeah we're definitely going. I'm putting to, Ryan Sipes on my team too if it's muddy. Yeah, Ryan Sipes is one that that is definitely interesting to me. Um, let's see here. Uh, How about uh, can I sell you to Jerry Robin? Absolutely not. Oh. In your wildest dreams. I think he he's gonna qualify fast. Mm. He's a fifteen. <sighs> Yeah, well, he qualifies fast, and then in the race, it all goes to hell. So uh, he got landed on last week, so I'm going to give him a pass. What about a what about a Derek Kelly at a 15? No, you don't think so. At least did he make a, the main? At least he's on. I don't know. That's a, that's a good how about, question. Uh, how about Pierce Crow? Uh, possibly. I After feel... watching that video of him, I think I'm out. Uh, yeah, but... I don't know. Yeah, I mean, honestly, um, probably if it does go muddy. I mean, uh, somebody. Well, what about what about like a Cody Shock at a ten? No. I mean, he'd be good in the mud too. I don't know how good of equipment he's on. Yeah, I mean, if it goes muddy, there's a very high chance Ryan Sipes goes on my team because we yeah. know Sipes can put it through the mud. He's yeah, done I mean, the, the mud, mud is a, an X factor. Like a mud team could be Sipes, Smith, Amart. Um, you could have. You could take a look at Pierce Brown. You could keep him on the back burner. You could keep Mitchell on the back burner. Michigan guy should be able to ride in the mud. Um, Joey Crown, another Michigan guy that should be able to ride in the mud. So, who is Jordan Bailey riding for? Uh, he's on a Yamaha, just doing his own thing. Oh, okay, I thought that's what he was doing, but then I wasn't sure if he was on some team I didn't know about. So. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty, like we said, I mean, the team I have right now is if conditions are good. If conditions are not good, the team could change very quickly. So, like I yeah. said, Wageman definitely goes out for a Sipes if it's raining. And then beyond that, we'll see what it looks like. But, um, okay, any first of the finish line for 250s? Do we? Can I sell you on a Justin Cooper for a first of the finish line there? Oh, yeah, I'm in. Okay, that was easy. I'm in. I'm debating whether I want to do that or not. I may I may risk that for the biscuit here. Uh for uh for two fifty class, four fifties, I'm out. It is mm-hmm. it is good to note Daytona here. We're doing basically a full like literally a full lap uh mm-hmm. before we get there. But uh but yeah. So all right, anybody else with two fifties here or you want to move to four fifties? Um Nah, I think I'm Gucci. Let's go to 450s. All right, I have the winning 450 team here. Whether oh, it is you? whether it is muddy or good or nice out, I'm I, I'm breaking my iPad over my knee here because I put in this 450 team that's phenomenal. Starting off with the Brit Max Anstey at an eight. He's on my team. Whether it rains or not, he's staying on my team. That guy rides mud. We know this. Then I got your boy Justin Bogle at a six. He's moved down to Florida. He's riding the eighty-three compound. He's on the come up. I like where we're. I like where we're going. Top ten last week. I think he can be in the top ten here going forward. I, I'm on the Bogle train right now until he burns me this week, and then I'm fucking out. <laughs> um, next up, I got uh, Dylan Ferrandis. One handicap. He is not leaving my team no matter what. 
uh, muddy, not muddy, anything of the sort, he's in. One handicap, he's going to be in the top 10. You know he is, so you're getting double points. He's probably going to be closer to the front of the top 10, so we're, we're in it. I'm in it. I'm, like I said, I'm breaking my iPad here after I read this last guy. My all-star for the 450 class, Ken Roxon. One handicap, we're good. We're Gucci. That's it. We're done. I broke my iPad. The show's over. Okay. Interesting. That, um, is, that is the winning team. That is, uh, let's see, what do we got? 52, 52, 52, 156 plus a 26. Oh, you're calling 52s across the board. Oh, yeah. One, one, that, is, that is 182 there. 182, well, po- 182 points in in the 450 class alone. Well, I am going Dean Wilson at a three. He's been Bold like move. 12. He's been 12th all day, all day long. Every race he's been in, he's pretty much been 12. Um, and Osborne's out. So, yeah, so move um, him up one. Move him up one. Um, you could even throw Sabachi in that conversation, but uh, right now I got Wilson at a three on my team. He's pretty good at Daytona. Um, I'm gonna look at Sabachi as well. Another guy that I'm gonna look at, even with a zero, is Aaron Plessinger. He's always pretty good at Daytona, but if it rains, I'm for sure picking him. He's gonna be confident. Um, but uh, yeah, my team is pretty locked down. I don't think I'm going to change it too much. Um, Chase Sexton at a two. He's probably not leaving my team all day. That is the one guy I was just scrolling here that I overlooked the first time. And I've heard his name a gazillion times this week, obviously, for multiple reasons. And yeah, he's, uh, we'll have to see, we'll have to see how it goes. But uh, it would be either Bogle or Anstey leaving to put him on my team. Yeah, but so at the, I, at I the go same, same time, day. he's he's going to be a high pick trend this week. So if I save him for next week at Dallas, might be better. His handicap will probably be lower, but he still, I don't think, will be yeah, an all-star. He'll all-star. probably be a negative one to a negative two. Yeah, which will still be good points because he's going to be top five next week. So, well, know, we'll see. Yeah, I we'll see because... Uh, Depending on when Osborne comes back too, he's gonna be he's gonna fall out out of All Star range. So who is behind Osborne in points? Do you know? I have any idea. Twenty twenty one Supercross points. Because where I'm going with this is he's gonna fall out of All Star. So who who can you use up this week that might not be able to be used next week? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Uh, let's see what we got. But, yeah, I got ANC on my team for sure. And a, I might look at Chisholm just because it's Florida. Chisholm, um, I think, would be a solid pick. Barsha and you have would another be, guy out. Barsha would yes. be a good pick for an all-star also, whether it's rain, whether it's muddy or not. I think he's going to do well this week. Yeah, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking the Chisholm thing. Actually, I just talked myself into it. Um, Chisholm because Brayton is not a hundred percent, so you can move him up another spot in the main. He's gonna beat a guy like uh, that sneaks his way into the main, like Bowers or something like that. So, uh, where is Chis? What is he? A ten? Um, ten. Ten. Yeah, handicap. ten. So I mean, you're pretty good. He, I mean, chance of him getting yeah, twentieth or better. I'm gonna take high. him. Yeah, Benny Bloss is probably gonna shit the bed. So. We'll be all right. Um, Eli Tomac is an all-star. It's stupid not to pick him, I think. So I've got him. I have my doubts. Why? I just, I don't know. We haven't seen anything from him. It wouldn't surprise. I mean, here's the thing. We haven't seen anything from him. So it would not surprise me whether he comes out and wins this or he finishes like fourth. All right. So AC is eighth in points. So he's going to fall out. Um, and it looks like Jason Anderson, Dylan Ferrandez, or Aaron Plessinger, probably Ferrandez or Plessinger, are going to make their way into the top 10 in points. Or top 8, I should say. Um, so use up Anderson if you can. Um, and then you got Savachi's 13th in points. So yeah, um, Plessinger, Ferrandez, Anderson have the potential to become all-stars this weekend. So if you can use them, use them up. All right. 
Yeah, I mean, sounds like a good plan. Anderson's right on my screen, so I can't use him. Uh, definitely look at Plessinger. And uh, I have Ferrandez on the team already, and he's not coming off. So, okay, I'm in there. Yep. So, yeah, that's where I'm at, too. Um, Sexton, Anstey, Tomac, Chisholm, and uh, first to the finish line, Justin Cooper for 250 class. And, uh, yeah, my locks are going to be No, there um, are our, Alex pre- Martin. There are our premier custom trailer picks, uh, premier yeah, picks premier of, pick the week. of the week. Yep, Alex Martin is not leaving my team. And Chase Sexton is not leaving my team. All barring right. any injuries or practice crashes. Uh, I'm going to go with Dylan Ferrandis for my 450s and my 250s. I'm going with uh, Justin Cooper. All right. Actually, you know what? I can go with someone who I can't pick. I'm going to go with Garrett Marchbanks. All right. So there we are. Right. There we have it. All right. right. Anything else before we wrap this up? Uh. No, wrap it up. All right. This has been another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show Fantasy Podcast Edition. Again, make sure to go check us out uh, on uh, pulpamexfantasy.com. Moto Aftermath Show is the league. Make sure to join the league. Message us on Instagram. Prizes here and there and at the end of the season. Uh, Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Thanks for listening in. Thanks to our sponsors, TLR Coatings, Premier Custom Trailers, JT Cycle, and uh, the Dirt Bike Depot. And uh, we will be back next week for uh, Dallas 1. See you all later. Uh, Later.